What's up, everybody? I want to come to you today in regards to rights and asserting those rights and why we are able to do that whenever we are confronted by a police officer. Now, we also we understand that the only reason that they can be there and have a conversation with you pretty much is for a lawful reason. If they do not have a lawful reason being there, which means they let's say they got a call with that call has to be from somebody that has given them credible information before. Two, that call also has to be in relation to a crime. You, also, you often hear them say, well, we're here just to check on you. Well, that's also great, but that does not mean that they are there for a crime. So anything beyond that is outside of their fiduciary duty. And I constantly say fiduciary duty because we have to understand they have the duty to us. So they have to be amenable to us at all times. Now, one of the things I've actually been listening to lately is when someone is asserting their quote unquote federal right, a police officer deems them uncooperative. Now, here's why you're able to do that. First case is NAACP versus Alabama, 375 U.S. 449, 1958. The assertion of federal rights, when plainly and reasonably made, are not to be defeated under the name of local practice. A lot of the times, you're going to have them go through a point of changing or misquoting or half quoting. A statute. One of the most famous ones is officers that are in Las Vegas. And I will say Las Vegas because I hear it from them more often than not. Because we actually went back again with the Hybel versus Nevada. And where Hybel was protecting his or asserting his federal rights to not give his name for the basis of privacy because at the time he had not committed a crime. An officer has to believe that a crime has been committed and once a crime or the the articulation of a crime had been or about to be committed and you are possibly involved in it, you are therefore required to give your name. Here's where they misquote that statute, even that law in high bill. The only portion that you are supposed to give or required to give is your first name not date of birth not full name just your first name because your privacy interests are still being protected until they can establish a crime has been committed and the one thing that I hate is the fact that many of them attempt to use the minority report shout out to Tom Cruise and trying to pretty much get money for a state or a county versus doing actual police work versus the criminals. So again, NAACP versus Alabama. And here's where we go into the proper way of suing. This is just one of the statutes or one of the U.S. codes, United States codes for federal court. That is Title 42. United States Code 1983. Very simple to remember. And again, it's just one and it's a partial. Title 42, United States Code 1983 provides for federal civil liability for every person who under color of any statute, ordinance, regulations, custom, or usage of any state subjects or causes to be subject any person within the United States to the deprivation of any rights, privileges, or immunities secured by the United States Constitution and laws. Remember, the supreme law of the land is the codes, the U.S. codes, and Supreme Court decisions. So if they are doing anything outside of that, they have violated their oath, they have violated their fiduciary duty, it is insurance fraud, as I've shown you, and they do not deserve to wear the badge. Because if we start doing things properly, they stop doing things they are not supposed to do. Now remember, Title 42, United States Code, 1983. And 
NAACP versus Alabama, 375 U.S. 449, 1958. Until next time, keep asserting your rights.